Welcome back. Today we're talking to uh, Dennis Crowley, co-founder of Foursquare. Tell us, r remind us what's Foursquare again, because I'm not, you know. <laughs> so we're building things for mobile phones that are supposed to make cities easier to use. And it combines friend finders with social city guides with a little bit of layer of uh, game mechanics on top to re reward people for doing interesting things. So you said something interesting the other day. We, the other day we wrote a story about how Facebook is coming out with their own little check-in feature. And you said that by the end of 2010, you expect check-ins to be a commodity. That's interesting. What did you mean by that? Uh, I think, well, I mean, everyone's kind of getting into the check-in game. And yeah. so even when we, we did it back in the day with Dodgeball, we saw a bunch of competitors. And that was before the day where everyone was kind of sharing data. And now that you know, open APIs are the norm, uh, I imagine that there'll be a lot of services that are offering check-in services or check-in functionality, and that they'll eventually go to some common place, and a lot of different applications will be able to push and pull from them. So how does, how does Foursquare, you know, how do you make it so it's more than a commodity on Foursquare? What do you, what do, you do to make it so people incentivize them to, to keep checking in? Yeah, well, we always thought the thing that was broken with Dodgeball was there was no incentive to check in. <clears throat> um, and, you know, the, the big thing that's different in Foursquare is we try to curate that experience so something different happens every time. Like, you might uh, get notified about a special that's nearby. You might get to earn some points. You might earn some badges. And I think the sweet spot is kind of curating that experience so that it is fun to check in every time. And you want to keep doing it over and over again. There's this perception out there that Foursquare is a killer app for New York City, and it's very popular on the coast, even San Francisco. How do you, do you think that's a fair perception? And, and, and if it is, how do you break into mainstream America, what I, what I call the normals? Yeah, well, I mean, I think this stuff is always going to work in, you know, in, in areas of high density, a high density of people or places or things to do. And it just so happened that, that you know, those normally overlap with large cities. Um, that being said, I mean, there's pockets of density everywhere you go, on college campuses, um, uh, you know, like we used to say that it doesn't, it's not that it works so great in Boston, it works in certain pockets of Boston. Or it doesn't work so great in New York, it works in certain pockets of New York. Sure. Uh, so the big challenge for us is, you know, <clears throat> how do you expand that or extend that use case to folks that are outside of those larger areas? And so some of the stuff that we're doing with partnering with larger media companies or, um, you know, just trying to offer a greater breadth of functionality kind of addresses those issues. You sold your last startup, Dodgeball, to Google. And Google's going on a massive acquisition spree now. They say they're going to buy a company a month. Is Google good at acquiring companies or in integrating them? You know, you left after a couple years. Well, I, I think it depends. You know, we were there. We were there in a really interesting time when I think you know the New York office was was really just starting to ramp up, and I don't think that was the right time for us to be there. Uh, I think you know you have to evaluate it on a case by case basis, and uh, you know it depends on how large the company is and what and you know what the company is actually doing and how that fits into their larger plans. 